People love green cars, etc., but they don't generally buy them unless they're sexy. That's why Tesla is so successful. Okay, Thomas, first of all, when will we see the first solar passenger plane take off? Well, you know, predictions are very hard to make, especially if they concern the future, as uh, physicist Niels Bohr once said. Uh, now, speaking of physics, actually, you know, if you are able to uh, deal with two physical laws, basically, then you'll be able to have that. One is gravity, and the other is uh, the physical uh, law according to which uh, resistance to air quadruples with uh, doubling speed of an aircraft, right? So it's not going to happen, but in theory, you could have a blimp, you know, those, uh, that are, you know, um, uh, balloons, basically, that, uh, you know, are propelled by uh, engines. Uh, plastered with solar cells, um, and you can turn that into kind of another solar impulse. But, you know, f if you want to fly from Paris to Sydney on a blimp, uh, you wouldn't do it because, you know, life's too short. <laughs> okay, um, well, if oh, we've seen the solar impulse here, if, if solar is to struggle as you move forward, then what other green aviation technologies can it propel? Yeah, I mean, you know, solar impulse um, is probably not meant actually to uh, even dream up something like a commercial uh, electrical powered uh, aircraft. It is just to give the impulse for uh, thinking of uh, new technologies new, uh, based on renewable uh, energy that exist already today, right? And the combination of those in the end will probably prevail when it comes to aviation. So things like uh, fuel cells, things like uh, fuel based on renewables, uh, and many other things you can do at an airport level actually to uh, reduce the uh, ecolo ecological footprint of aviation in general. So it's got to be a combination, uh, but it's going to take more time. Mm -hmm. What about the economic impact, perhaps, of green aviation, particularly on airports as we move forward? Yeah, the thing is, uh, there's one big challenge, um, and that is that people uh, are not ready to accept uh, um, basically having to deal with uh, or accepting less of the amenities, less of the uh, positive things they have uh, encountered in aviation in the past 20 years, so to speak, in terms of comfort, in terms of cost, in terms of speed, right? So you can dream up technologies uh, that will be much greener than today, but at the same time, you have to ensure that people still accept uh, the product, right? So Green technologies of tomorrow will have to be just as performing, just as comfortable, and just as speedy and uh, low cost as they are today. And that is the real challenge. That is a real challenge. But do you see this acceptance as being inevitable? It's just a matter of time? It's just uh, a psychological factor, if you will. Uh, and you see it everywhere. People love green cars, etc., but they don't generally buy them unless they're sexy. That's why Tesla is so successful. So what we need is a Teslaization of air transport over time. Okay, Thomas, thank you very much for your insight today. Pleasure. And thank you for watching. Be sure to click back to Jugoscopy TV for more updates and exclusive interviews. We'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.